My name's Dr Ben Gilby, I'm a Senior Lecturer in Animal Ecology at the Moreton Bay campus of the University of the Sunshine Coast. My principal responsibility on the project is related to the fish ecology of the island here. Um, we know that there's some wonderful fish biodiversity at Lady Elliot Island. We know that it's really important to the reef and we also know that those fish assemblages and all the different sorts of fish that we have here are excellent indicators for the overall condition of the reef. interesting things that we're doing on this particular trip is trying to find the signature, that chemical signature of the nitrogen that the birds defecate out on the island on the reef flat. And we're trying to track that chemical signature of the bird poo from the island all the way out to the reef. And we do that in a couple of really interesting different ways. First of all, we've divided the island up into eight different wedges, pizza slices if you like. And we sample on each of the different wedges um, a variety of different animals. And we start by sampling right close up to the shore and all the way up to the, to the reef crest. Yeah, this afternoon we're out here on the reef flat uh, collecting samples from a whole variety of animals to actually trace their, to get an idea of their chemical signatures. And their chemical signatures tells us a lot about what they're eating and what they're doing out on the flat. And it also tells us a bit about the effectiveness that the restoration effort on the island is having for the reef itself. We can actually trace the signature, the chemical signature of the bird faeces out onto the reef to see whether that's having any measurable effect on the reef. That's probably over in that in that area over there. Yeah. Alrighty, you lead Definitely. the way west. Which way are we going? That way? Out here? Well, last October we actually put out some temperature loggers. They're actually called hobo loggers. And they track temperature every couple of minutes on the reef flat. And we're using that to look for how temperature affects all sorts of different animals here on the reef. Everything from the corals themselves all the way up to the fish. Um, so we can get very accurate daily measures of temperature over that entire year just by looking at these, um, these little devices. They're very small devices, they're less than, I mean, a bit bigger than a 50 cent piece. Just about here. That's it. That's been tracking the temperature of the reef for 12 months, just on a tiny little button battery. And we'll take that back to the lab and download that data. It'll give us some lovely long-term data about what's been happening here on the reef. So right across the reef flat, doesn't matter where you are, there's little microscopic algae growing on all the different surfaces. And that algae grows, it's eaten by herbivores on the reef, very important type of animal that lives on the reef. It's a very important food source for a lot of different animals. And so we're actually scraping off some of that uh, microalgae here with a knife and taking that away for stable isotope and, and chemical tracer analysis. So this is halameda, this is a calcifying algae. It's a indicator algae that we've chosen for this particular project. We've chosen it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's not commonly eaten by many things on the reef, so it's a pretty reliable um, type of algae that we can find um, a lot around each of these different sections of the reef and we'll, we'll put it into one of these sample containers. We don't need a lot of it, we only need a couple of grams so I'll just pull a little bit off there. Pop that into the sample tube there and then all of these samples we take back to the lab, we dry them out and then crush them all up and send them off for analysis. What we're doing here is we're just taking a couple of little bit of flesh off the sea cucumber to get its uh, stable isotope readings. It's totally non-lethal, doesn't hurt the cucumber at all. Everything that we do here on the reef is, um, is non-lethal um, and that's, that's one of the examples of that. In, in the past people might have taken an entire animal to sample but now with the technology that we have with this isotope analysis we can just take a tiny little snip of the animal, doesn't affect the animal at all, just like cutting a fingernail off. Um, and we were able to use that as, um, as, the, as the indicator for that animal. So climate change is a big issue for coral reefs all around the world and the Great Barrier Reef is no exception to that. 
And we know that as temperatures increase throughout the Great Barrier Reef, animals are going to start to move. They're going to start to move in a poleward direction to um, keep their temperature thresholds within their usual tolerances. So animals that occur in the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef might start moving to this southern part of the Great Barrier Reef. In this sense, Lady Elliot could be considered a bit of an ark. It could be a location where animals from the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef come to seek refuge from those really high temperatures. And as climate change worsens and as the effects of climate change become increasingly evident on the Great Barrier Reef, we'll start to identify fish that have settled here as a result of that. So one of the key things that we're going to do here on, on the Leaf to Reef project is actually to census the biodiversity of fish life here to give us a great baseline so that when we come back here in the future, when we come back here in five or ten years time and some of these climate migrants, these tropical species that have migrated south have started to arrive, we can actually know exactly which species are new and which ones have been here forever. So I see you've got a fishing rod on Lady Elliot, isn't this a green zone? It certainly is a green zone and we're certainly not doing any fishing. As, as good as the fish life is out there, today we've got a portable sounder. So not all that dissimilar to what the everyday person would have in their boat. And we attach this one to a fishing rod and it connects to our phone. And by using this we're able to get really high resolution maps of the depth topography or the bathymetry of the reefs and we can link that data to a diversity of different organisms that live on the reef of Lady Elliot. So we can cast off the shore but we can also tow this behind kayaks and boats. So we've got this screen here that connects directly to the sounder and that way we've got a map and our depth readings so that way we can tell the spatial extent that we've covered with the sounder and also have a look at the depth profiles that we're mapping in real time. When we get back into the lab, I can start processing through all this data and put it onto a few programs that we use to do all this and handle the data and we can start creating the maps that we'll use to link the different depths and topography of the reef to the organisms here on Lady Elliot. We're off today to do some fish and coral surveys and we'll be using a couple of different methods for that. Uh, we use underwater video for all of the surveys that we do for both the coral and the fish. Uh, one's a swimmable diver, uh, diver transect to survey fish and we'll talk a bit about that in a minute. And then we're also surveying corals by taking photo quadrats of the, of the corals themselves. And this is the sort of gear that we'll be using to do that. Uh, the first and most important piece of gear is of course uh, a camera. It's just a, any sort of camera that you get off the shelf. Um, but what we have there is a plumb line. You can see a, a rope and then a very heavy weight down the bottom there. And we use that actually to line it up against the, against the coral on the ground. And we have a perfect one metre square quadrat just by doing that. So we've, we've calibrated that back in the lab and we know that if, if that plumb line is on the ground then we're taking a perfect one metre quadrat. The next, the next bit of kit that we have is just a typical spearfisher's float here. And I'll attach that to my weight belt. I didn't really have a GPS unit. And that GPS unit is constantly keeping a track of where I am in the, in the, in the ocean. So we're able to geo-reference, it's called, use those GPS points to very accurately locate where we're taking those coral photos. So we can make very accurate maps of the corals uh, right throughout the reef by combining this technology here with the simple camera that we have there. Uh, today we're looking at the fish diversity and abundance on the reef. Um, so as Ben said, we're looking at the coral cover and diversity as well using the camera um, and then what I'm going to be doing is going along in front of him and using what we call a stereo dove, a dive operated video system um, and that enables us to record the fish um, and then go back to the lab and analyse it um, and as well we can also measure traits of the fish because these uh, it's two cameras, a stereo and they're actually angled in at about four degrees inwards um, and so using this specific software you can go back in the lab watch this footage, analyse it and measure traits such as eye diameter, tail fork length, body depth, um, which provides really real-time traits uh, that we wouldn't get otherwise. So this is it, the stereo dove. So two cameras, so these are just GoPros in each one. Um, and they're numbered here because we've calibrated this whole system. And so um, each camera has to go back into its specific housing. And so basically we swim, we angle it down a little bit so we get the fish that are in front of us as well as just um, below us. 
and we'd basically do a 50 metre transect, swinging, swimming along with this, quite slowly because you know we're moving, fish are moving, we don't want to scare them away as well. And so also it enables us to, to re-watch the footage quite easily. One of the most important things that people can do to help us in our research is actually help us get that baseline information about the types of fish that actually occur here. So a lot of citizen scientists have contributed to our database of the fish that are occurring on Laddie Elliot Island. You know, we as scientists can only spend a certain amount of time out on the reef. And we know that people come here many, many times and take lots of photos of the fish that are occurring on the reef. So if they find a photo of a fish that they think is a bit unusual or something they haven't seen here before, we would love to see that photograph because we can then add that to our database of fish that are occurring here on Lady Elliot. So we have an Instagram page and a Facebook page. So if you go to Instagram or Facebook and look up Leaf to Reef, you'll be able to submit your photos via those social media platforms. Lady Elliot Island is an absolutely fantastic place to conduct research. And we know that climate change, as it starts to increase and starts to cause effects on the Great Barrier Reef, that we're likely to start finding animals on Lady Elliot Island that have never been seen here before. Animals will move to try and stay within their thermal tolerances. So Lady Elliot is a great living laboratory, if you like, of the effects of climate change over, on coral reefs over a very long period of time. And so by taking this sort of baseline information of everything on the island, everything from the macroalgae all the way up to the red-tailed tropic birds, we get a really great baseline information about the effects that climate change might have more broadly on the Great Barrier Reef. So call me up